We got a heater for you today, guys. One of the most important mantras to master in life is expect to suffer. The reason why is because the human mind is constantly prioritizing self-interest and prioritizing preservation through seeking of the path of least resistance. However, the path of least resistance is the surefire path to long-term guaranteed failure for good. This has been one of the biggest upgrades in my life over the last few years is the shifting of my mindset from a life of seeking pleasure and that life should be about fun and pleasure to a life of choosing to press into suffering and enjoy the process of growth that comes through suffering because friction is the pathway to resilience because friction is adversity, right? So when we don't encounter any friction in life, we're just gonna get weaker and weaker. How many times have you caught yourself or somebody you know praying for things to be easier? All you're doing is asking for the creator to make you weaker. No, do not do this, guys. Understand that suffering is pure joy. One of my favorite books says that suffering is pure joy. We consider it pure joy. So, well, it's actually my favorite book of my favorite book, if you get what I'm saying here. The book of James says suffering is pure joy. That's my interpretation of it. So when we expect to wake up in the morning and not have pain in our lives and not experience suffering or just be in a positive state, we are, are literally twisting ourselves into a loserville before we even get out of bed in the morning because we are predetermining the fact that our expectation will not be met. So what do we do? How do we overcome this? How do we avoid this? We have got to imprint deep in our mind, deep in our spirit, that life is about suffering and it's about enjoying the process of suffering and upgrading from it. And what I've begun doing is actually building this trigger in this, this pattern in my life. Whenever I think I'm suffering in my mind, because there's like a quote by Marcus Aurelius or somebody like that, a Stoic philosopher that's like, we suffer more in our mind than in reality, right? So whenever I think I'm suffering, I actually put myself into real suffering with something like doing some burpees or taking a cold shower or doing a crazy workout, whatever that form of that suffering takes for the day, I choose to put myself into a form of suffering. So when life hands me suffering, I can just run with it. It doesn't bother me at all. Because most people, they don't ever expose themselves to suffering on purpose. So whenever life shows up with suffering, they don't know how to handle it. And they melt down and they spaz out and they lose their minds because they have an expectation that life should be about just no pain, just about no suffering, that the world should conform to them because they're such an important person and individual, they think that life should actually bend to them rather than realizing everything they're experiencing, all of the suffering is their higher self calling them up to be a stronger version of themselves. It's designed by the creator to make them a better person. But most people will never get these upgrades. Most people will constantly miss out on life's opportunities to actually become who they're meant to be and find the cure to their pain because they're too focused on how much they shouldn't be suffering or how much they are resisting suffering. When in fact, rather than resisting the suffering, thus giving it power over them and making it stronger and taking power outside themselves, they could actually reclaim all of their power by choosing to use the suffering to upgrade, by enjoying the process of suffering as the thing that's calling them up to get stronger, to put down their carnal-driven, childish ways of selfishness and self-centered thinking about themselves and how the world is so out to get them. This is a massive opportunity for everybody and I encourage you guys, when you start getting caught up in your feelings and you find yourself thinking about how you're feeling, if you're able to have that metacognition, which most people can't because they're too caught up in their feelings, but when you get to that place of awareness where you can actually become aware of how you're feeling about how you're feeling, you, you can begin to see the opportunities and 
endless possibilities that the world is working for you. Every single thing you're experiencing, especially the really sucky suffering that you hate and don't want to feel, all of that is on purpose. It's being sent to you because you prayed for certain things and asked to be expanded in certain areas and ways, but then you thought you would get there without ever having to become stronger and more resilient and actually know how to deal with pain, real pain, not imaginary pain inside of our own heads. So whenever you think you're experiencing pain in your life, I challenge you guys to actually put yourself into real pain. Of course, don't be idiots. Make it safe, you know, don't, don't bludgeon yourself or something stupid like this or take some silly risk. What I'm saying is, is elective adversity pain. So exercise, breath work, cold therapy, something that you really hate doing but that's really good for you, running. For me, I hate running. I, I literally almost made myself go for a run this morning because I was so caught up in my lower nature and being such a self-centered, selfish little child, childish person thinking about how I was feeling about how sore I am or blah, 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 or energy or whatever, okay? It's all a choice and you can choose at any moment to put down your ties and your anchors to your feelings and your selfishness and self-centered thinking and you can choose to pick up the amazing weights that get you stronger by lifting them of suffering putting yourself in the path of suffering and expecting to suffer every single day. Expect to suffer. Expect to suffer. And then when you have a day or a string of days or a week or a string of weeks where you're not suffering as much, then oh my gosh, what an amazing double bonus that is, right? The fact of the matter is though the real ones, the real ones out there know that if they're not suffering, they're not growing. The real ones have associated suffering with growth. They have associated comfort with stagnation and death. So when you associate discomfort and suffering with growth and elevation, you begin to seek out these situations in your life with that perspective that you're gonna grow from it. You stop running from the things that show up in your day-to-day -day life and you turn around and you face them head on. You stop acting like a little child and you stand up and you actually take responsibility for your life and the way that you choose your attitude in every situation, like Viktor Frankl said, that's the last of human freedoms, is to choose your attitude in any situation. You could choose your attitude right now to be better than it is. All it takes is letting go of your ego, and the best way to do that is to conquer the self with things like fasting, things like cold therapy, things like breath work that cause you to separate from that fleshly desire and drive, and first and foremost, the number one thing is to dial in your nutrition and stop eating all the bull junk. I love y'all. Get to work. When you elevate your awareness, you elevate your life. Shine brighter!